Hi, I'm Mark Trexler with The Climatographers. Now, you can see from my LinkedIn profile or see at climatographer.com that in 1991, I launched the first consulting firm in the U.S. to focus on business and climate change. And I followed that path for the next two decades. A number of years ago, I made a slight shift, and I want to give you an update on that because I think it might be relevant to some of your work on climate change. So to give you just a quick sense of the rationale for that shift, I actually saw a presentation by the authors of, the, of this book, Influencer, at a big uh, conference in New York, and I found it fascinating. And to boil the book down to a couple of sentences, which is always risky, you know, they were saying that in terms of influencing decision making, it's key to remember that everyone is asking themselves exactly the same two questions before making any decision. Is it worth it to me to engage? And is there something I can do to influence relevant outcomes? And as I watched this, I realized, number one, how challenging that is for the topic of climate change. And number two, how bad a job I was doing in, in satisfying that even after two decades of successful management consulting in this space. And the reason being that it is so hard to get the right information to the right person at the right time in terms of helping them answer those two questions. So the next day, uh, and based on a long interest in knowledge management uh, and work in knowledge management, the next day I started building what is now the climate web. And it's a comprehensive knowledge system for all things relating to business decision making and other topics relating to climate change, but specifically business decision making with the idea of helping make it possible to get that actionable knowledge to the right person at the right time. Now, to give you, you know, a, a bit more of a sense of what I mean by actionable knowledge, I mean, first of all, when we have a wicked problem like climate change, when we have the sheer number of uncertainties relating to business decision making that we have today around climate change, there is a desperate need for actionable knowledge in terms of people making uh, robust decisions in this space. And just to give one example in, in using the climate web, the graphic that you see here on the right hand side, very colorful, basically showing for all the different ecosystems of the Western US, how much of a change in annual area burned scientists expect based on one degree or per one degree C of temperature change. Uh, this slide went up on the wall with a, a Fortune 100 company that we were working with, and it totally changed the nature of the conversation we were having. Uh, they previously had been looking at climate change exclusively as a corporate social responsibility issue. And when this slide went up on the wall, several senior people around the room said, now I get it. Now I understand why I should be thinking about climate change as a potentially material business issue. Totally changed the nature of the conversation, led them down the path towards engaging in a, in a, in a pretty advanced uh, uh, scenario planning project, which we undertook. And so again, this piece of information, this one slide changed the conversation. Now, actionable knowledge isn't always that simple, but the idea of actionable knowledge is that simple. And we've continued to work with the climate web. And here's what you know, one client had to say about it, that you know, the climate web is like having a hundred leading experts in, in a lot of related but important topics to, to corporate decision making at the decision making table with you. And that's, that's exactly what we're trying to do with the idea of actionable knowledge and the climate web. Now, I'm going to jump into the climate web for a couple of minutes just to show you a few things quickly, and then I'll pop back out. Give me just one second. So now we're in the climate web, and I've uh, selected a particular spot. This happens to be one of the pivotal consulting reports around the issue of business materiality and climate change, Mercer's 2011 report, which basically announced to the world that companies needed to start thinking of climate change as a potentially material business issue albeit climate policy. They specifically excluded climate change itself at the time, modifying that view in a 2015 report. But as you can see here, you know, the actual report is right here to your right, uh, but we've pulled out a lot of key things, some of the key graphics, some of the key ideas from uh, the report. And what that makes possible is that these pieces of information can be organized in all kinds of other 
ways and so that you can find that information without necessarily having to go through the entire report, although you certainly can if you want. To give you one example of that, and it's on a slightly different topic, but it has to do with integrated assessment models, key to the whole conversation around the social cost of carbon. So what we've done, for example, is we've read dozens of those reports having to do with integrated assessment models and the social cost of carbon, and we've extracted information to help you answer all of these questions very easily by just clicking on the question and seeing what everyone or what a lot of experts have had to say about that exact question across dozens of reports that otherwise you'd have to sort of start digging through to, to try and get that information. So this is an example of just a, a micro slice of what's in the climate web. You know, we have thousands and thousands of documents, tens of thousands of, of URLs and news stories and, and websites. It's a massive resource. And this is, I'm just trying to show here, one of the kinds of things we do with the information it, that we slice and dice from all of, all of these, uh, these things. To give you another sense of that, I'm going to click on headings. And these are sort of headings that I've identified as specifically relevant, particularly relevant to advisory support. There are thousands of headings in the climate web. Here's just a couple of dozen. But these sort of give you a sense of being a, of the topics that you can click on and, and go right to the bibliographies or the news stories or the relevant websites or the relevant ideas, the relevant graphics for these kinds of topics. Uh, where we've spent thousands of hours slicing and dicing to, to pull this information into a format that makes it possible to put up on the wall the kind of slide that we did in working with the client that I was mentioning at the very outset. Now, one of the things we do with this information is put it into uh, dashboards. And let me show you, and I'm going to go to a slightly different view because it's a, it's a use, very useful view for this kind of work. Um, just for example, carbon pricing, not surprisingly, we have a ton of information in here on carbon pricing, but this dashboard sort of pulls a lot of that information together, gives some insight into the key questions around carbon pricing, points you to key index entries that you might want to explore for carbon pricing, some of the key topical headings for carbon pricing, but then also points you to some of the key graphics around um, uh, carbon pricing, some of the key reports around carbon pricing, uh, and you can pop them right open, or this one is actually too large, so it's not in the climate web. But you can pop many of these reports right open and, and look at them, or you can see the information that we've extracted, or you can pop open relevant news stories having to do with carbon pricing. So just this just just giving you a, a, a quick look at one of dozens of these kinds of dashboards. And I want to point to just one more of these just because I think it's such an important topic today and, and not getting the attention that it that it will in the future. And that's the topic of systemic climate risk. Uh, huge issue, relatively recent conversation, lots of, of interesting work going on in this space, um, you know, talking about how climate change is in its own right a systemic risk as opposed to just, you know, contributing to the financial sectors systemic risk. And so you can explore some of the issues, index entries, headings down at the bottom, and then you can jump into uh, some of the key documents. For example, Lloyd's Food System Shock is one of the initial reports in this genre, and you can read it or you can read what we've extracted from it and some of the key graphics, etc. So you can come up to speed on the topic of systemic risk in this one uh, dashboard basically. And again, one of dozens of dashboards on all the different topics that from an advisory perspective, you might want to be aware of. Now, one of the questions that we get a lot is, well, what about, you know, specific business sectors? How is that dealt with in the climate web? So let me just show you the, the, the sectors that we're tracking in the climate web, and we're organizing all the specific information we find that is specific to these sectors. Some of these topics we've worked in much more intensively than others. We've worked with electric utilities for decades, so that's massively covered. Some of the other uh, sectors are not as comprehensively covered, but whenever we find information and we're constantly finding information and adding it, it gets added in to this kind of sectoral organization, which makes it possible to uh, to, to look at climate, wet, uh, climate change issues 
uh, sector by sector, as well as from an overall business perspective. So I've popped back out of the climate web and the last couple of uh, slides here. First of all, we've used the climate web to, to help structure a series of advisory products and services. There is a business materiality dashboard that draws from the climate web that tracks uh, about 30 different uh, risk and opportunity variables and makes it easy to, to, to literally keep track of that uh, in minutes or, or an hour or whatever you want to spend on it or a senior decision maker wants to spend on it to be able to say that they're actually tracking all these different issues. Second, climate assumptions, audits, uh, a lot of the assumptions being used in corporate decision making today, just given how fast things are shifting, are probably not up to date or, or the most as accurate as you might want them uh, to be. And we've designed the climate web to help do assumptions audits by pulling together the pro and con information around many of the common assumptions that we've seen in play. And last, scenario planning overlays. We have overlays for uh, what I call conventional scenario planning as well as TCFD scenario planning, uh, where through those overlays, you can access thousands of hours of curated information specific to scenario planning processes and uh, goals. So how is all of this relevant to your work? Well, it's relevant because we want to use this kind of information and make this kind, all this information uh, available to you in your in achieving your own goals in working with clients and companies on climate change. And there are a number of ways that I would suggest the climate web might be able to help you do that and that make it possible for you to take advantage of the 20,000 hours of expert time that have gone into building the climate web. One option is simply for us to serve as sort of a climate knowledge back office in terms of you know several FTEs doing nothing but tracking climate change, which you probably don't have the luxury of doing within your own firm. Uh, another is as an internal knowledge resource. Due to a, a recent change in the software, you can now download the entire climate web to your desktop or your phone, although it's a little difficult to manage on your phone, but to your desktop and you could have somebody in your, in your firm or company uh, specialize in, in sort of using the climate web to your advantage, and it could be an internal resource for your own work on climate change. Another is white labeling the advisory products that we've structured specifically to use the climate web, and, and we can help deliver those, or you can deliver those on your own. Perfectly happy to talk about how to do that. Last, not least, is the uh, the possibility, if depending on, on what you want to do with it, it's possible to license the climate web and then remodel it in your own image to better serve what you need. In other words, you know, literally cutting and pasting and reorganizing, very easy to do, by the way, with the software that we use and where we can even support you on that. But you're not limited to downloading our version of the climate web. You can actually build your own. Um, and happy to talk about that. So I hope this has been useful and interesting. Um, you know, the 20,000 hours that we've spent in, in making it possible to get actionable knowledge to companies, I think could be very useful to, to what you're likely working on. Uh, marketclimatographer.com. Uh, you can find out more at theclimateweb.com and the products page there, or give me a call and I'd be, I'd welcome the chance to follow up with you. Thanks.